The big thing that I like to uh, talk to people about is having life a life of significance. You think about... You, you don't care if I just throw the outline out of the book today. I just... I, I really am excited about where God's taking all of us, including myself. Significance. A significant life. If I'm going to be on this people planet called Earth, I'm going to live to be 120 just because I want to plague my great-grandchildren. I'm going to be here 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years, whatever it may be. In the middle of eternity, I want to make it count. I'm going to heaven someday. I hope everybody joins me. That was really exciting. Or you could go to the alternative place. It's up to you. I'm going to heaven someday. I hope everybody decides to join me. There we go. That makes me feel a little bit better. I was a little concerned about you all just for a second. I, if I'm going to go there, my time, well, let's put it this way. The moment that I give my life to Jesus Christ, wouldn't it be great if he would just let us go to heaven? No more pain, no more sorrow, no more sickness. No more poverty, no more anxiety, no more depression, no more heartache, no more sorrow, no more death. Streets of gold, gates of pearl, mansions, being in the presence of God continually. I, I think I could think of no better place to be than heaven, but if, then why the moment that I give my life to Christ, does he not just take me there? Because you're left here for a purpose, a design, a plan. Now, growing up the way I grew up, I mean, you had to have everything just right. Now, I believe in accountability. Don't get me wrong. I think everybody ought to try to halfway live right. Well, some of you need to be good if we get to a quarter of way living right. But we have this fallacy that we think that we can't be used of God unless we are, have everything just perfect. And then we also have this fallacy in our mind, the thought that you can only be used of God if you're a pastor, you're a teacher, you're an elder, you're a deacon. No, God's plan is vastly so much more than that. I have a job in the public forefront to lead people in their faith. But you also... Whoever you are, whatever your plan, whoever you are, whatever God, whatever, whatever kind of career you have, your, your family, everything, everything is God's and everything is designed for a purpose. And what God wants is you to submit what he already has to have a life of significance. Some of you are teachers, some of you are uh, lawyers, some of you are nurses, some of you uh, are mothers, some of you are fathers, whatever it may be, God can use whatever you have if you submit it in order to go ahead and make somebody's life impacted for the gospel. And the gospel is more than just religion. It's more than just going to church on Sunday morning. It's more than just worship with songs and just religious rhetoric. The gospel is the fact that God gave his son, Jesus Christ, to redeem you from the curse of sin, death, and poverty. Right? That's the gospel. That he takes my place. That he is for you, not against you. I wish the world would know that God's not one that's setting up on a throne in the middle of a cloud that's just sitting there with a lightning bolt ready to smack you down if you do something wrong. Because that's the case. We all sin. We all struggle. We all have issues. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. We all have issues. Somebody said, I, didn't have it. I don't have any sin. Well, yeah, you do. It's called the sin of pride. So I need to know what God's plan for me is. I want to know what God's calling for me is. Is it if I go to seminary or if I do this, if I live just right, maybe I'll open up. No, I, I actually, let me, let me give you scripture. Would that be all right? Before, let me just give you scripture because I want to know how the creator of the universe, the creators of the heavens, the earth, the creator of mankind as we know it, the creator of the entire existence of anything everywhere. 
Uh, he is an intelligent designer. And maybe he can be taken outside of the box of religion. Maybe if we would just think like he thinks, maybe he can, we can have his, his design fulfilled with our purpose. Now, say I matter. I matter. On the count of three, you say I matter. I matter. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Give me the message translation, if you wouldn't mind. Before I shaped you in the womb. Now, we're going to be talking about a lot of uh, 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 people before you're born. So we're going to take a look. We're going to take a look at the Old Testament and the New Testament and see how God thinks about you. All right. Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew what? He knew all about you. Think about that. Before my mom and dad, Glenda and Boyd Young, in 1974 got together, and we're not going to talk about that because that's kind of gross, <laughs> got together before I was even conceived, before I was a fetus, before I was born on this earth, he knew me. Before anything ever, he knew me. How did he know me? Because time doesn't exist for God. Time exists for you. The creator of the universe created time, not so he can be restrained by time, but he created it for you. Everybody say for me. So he created me, but before I was even born, he knew who I was because he could slip out and figure out any decision that I was going to make in the future was bad, good, or indifferent. He knew I would decide before I decided. Think about that. And he still had a plan. Now, I want to show you something. We call this the sovereignty of God, the sovereignty of God. It doesn't mean that he causes evil things. It doesn't mean that he causes poverty. It doesn't mean he causes divorce. It doesn't mean he causes drug addictions. He just knows that you're going to do it before you did it. All right. So before I was shaped in my womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had what? What? Holy plans. Something that's holy is set apart. Well, you, Matt, you don't look very holy. I can never be righteous in my flesh. I can't be good enough to be holy. But what can make me holy is the blood of Jesus Christ and the redemption of my life through the power of the cross. I'm redeemed. You're redeemed. We're redeemed. Therefore, God has a holy plan. Now watch. Before you saw the light of day, I saw the holy plans, a prophet of the nations, that what I had in mind for you. Go, go ahead and look at, look at Psalms. Look at Psalms. Look at me. Look at me being all organized. 139. You made my what? Whole what? The whole being. Everything. Everything that you are. He made it. Oh. You formed me in my mother's womb. Body. Verse 14. I praise you. When did we last time we praise God for who we are instead of curse God for who we are? Your purpose will never be realized in life if you hate who you are. If you hate the existence of who you are, you hate where you came from, you hate everything about you, you will never walk in God's plan for your life. you got to stop cursing it and begin to praise God for it. Do you hear me? I want to tell you, some of you were born on the wrong side of the track. Some of you were born by, uh, to people that abused you and used you, everything else. How do I praise God for that? How do I praise God for the issues and the poverty and the racism and everything? I don't praise him for the, the issues, the poverty, the racism. No, no, no. I praise him because how he made me was good enough enough and strong enough to stand the test of everything coming against me. When we begin to praise God for what we know that he put in us before anything happened, we understand what used to crush us we can walk under. I praise God for that. I, 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 I'm not getting anywhere I need to go, but I'm going to get there. All right, here we go. What you have done is wonderful. I praise you. Let's read the whole thing, and then we're going to come back and look at it. I praise you because you've made me in an amazing and a wonderful way. What you have done is wonderful. Verse 15, you saw my bones being formed as I took shape in my mother's body when I was put together there. Oh, Lord. So you got to stop saying your life is a mess. You're put together. You're put together. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm put together. Look at your other neighbor and say, you, he, you look more put together than that guy. <laughs> you saw my body as it was born. Don't miss this. All the days planned for me 
were written in your book before I was one day old. So how in the world can God have a plan? I've got a dear sister that's with us from Adams County right now. She lost her husband this week. I have another family that it's been one year that they buried their 35-year-old son. She was going to give her testimony today, but she's ill. How in the world can that be in God's plan? God is loving and God's kind. God's merciful. How in the world could this be in his plan? Is it God that allows the Sudanese to see their children starving and dying? Is it God that allows and plans for the sex trafficking that goes on through the state of Ohio at ungodly rates? Is it God's plan and God's design to see anybody homeless? And when people would say, well, it's in God's plan, it used to anger me. And I began to think, how in the world can this be a just and loving and kind and merciful God? Why would I serve him if he planned this for me How, why would i serve him and love him and give him my life if i see he knew and he planned for a child to die would there be a holocaust or families ripped apart how can i serve a god that had a plan for that Somebody asked me one day, I, I don't think I felt the Spirit of God like I do right now in a long, long time. The greatest obstacle that I see of faith is this. If God's real, why is there suffering in the world? And that's a good, valid question. That's a great, valid question. And the only way I know how to answer it is this. God doesn't call suffering. He allows it. Why would he allow it, Matt? Because in order to eliminate suffering in the world, you have to eliminate people's free choice. If I'm going to look... I want to tell you, there's a star, people are starving in the world because people choose to allow it. Can I hear an amen? amen? I love it when people say, make my husband. Can you pray God will make my husband stay? I'm like, honey, God can do anything, but he will not violate someone's free will. Your kids are going to suffer. I admit it. But I tell you, even though you're going to suffer, the power of the Holy Spirit is going to come in behind and fix anything that you can even imagine if you submit your life. So in order to eliminate suffering, you have to eliminate free will. And God loves you so much that he did not create a, uni a robot. Yeah. So how in the world can everything going on in my days, God planned it. It's not that God planned your suffering. He saw the suffering was going to happen anyway, and he planned to use it for your purpose. There's the difference. The plan is not for suffering to come. The plan is not for sickness, heartache, disease, death, war, divorce, loss of job, loss of career to come. He didn't say he planned bankruptcy to come, but he said he saw everything that you were going to be and he knew what you were going to do and he's going to take everything wrong and he has a plan for you to work as in your purpose, your calling, and not let it stop you, but let it promote you in life. That's his plan. So let's look at this. Let me go back to verse 13. You made my whole being. You formed me in my mother's body. Verse 14. I praise you because you made me in an amazing and wonderful way. How in the world can I praise him because of how he made me when I hate me? If people would realize their significance and their self-worth, you know, the power of life and death, according to scripture, lies in your tongue. Can I hear an amen? 
Can I hear a big amen? Am I connecting to anybody today? Because I, 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 felt my, I, I, I felt my pill kick in just a little bit. Sometimes I slow down too much. How, the power of life and death is in the power of your tongue. The power of life and death is in the power of your tongue. Your life is what it is right now. You can choose if it's blessed or it's cursed moving forward. It's cursed if you keep hating on it. Imagine if my wife and I wanted to have a good marriage and all I did was tell her how horrible it is. No. Is there life or death in that? Promise you, real quick, she's going to leave me. And then I'm going to be sleeping in somebody's basement around here. I don't know who, but everybody got to take a week. That's all I'm saying. Everybody got to take a week. And, and there's, a, there's a traveling bobo bag that goes with me. Trust me. I come with my own meds, my, my own snacks. I got my own. You, you think I'm joking. I, they have a bag that when I travel, Crystal will give it to Daniel. And when I get home, Daniel will give it back to Crystal. I, am, I have a diaper bag for a pastor. If I say how horrible it is, how much I resent her, it's going to lead to the death of our marriage. But if I'm struggling with our marriage, instead of looking about how horrible it is, start talking about how good something is. And I ought to bring life. In your life, you've got to understand, yes, junk is going to happen. Are you proud of me? I cleaned it up. <laughs> Junk's going to happen. Junk's going to happen. The question is, are you going to speak life out over that junk or are you going to keep cursing the junk? Because you can either let it happen and be a victim or understand that God planned it anyway. What does it mean? If he would have took away your free will, you wouldn't have had to go through it. But he gave you your free will and he knew what you would do or what would happen before it happened. And here's the thing. The plan is this. He knew what you would be going through. He knew every struggle that you were going to have. He knew every weakness that you were going to have. He knew if your mom, your dad was going to suffer cancer. He knew if you were going to go through whatever you're going through. Here's what it is. Here, watch me. He knew it would happen, Karen. But what makes me so excited to serve an amazing, kind, generous, loving God is I got to begin to change my perspective. Before I knew it, before I was, well, oh, go back to verse 13. I got, I'm about to lose my mind. You made my whole being. You formed me in my mother's body. Look at this. Keep going. Keep, keep going. Go verse 14. Go, go toward 14. So I will praise you because uh, you made me in an amazing, wonderful way. How am I amazing? How am I wonderful? I actually need you to kind of compliment me right now. <laughs> verse 15. You saw my bones being formed as I took shape in my mother's body. Not just physical bones, but your structure, what you're made up with. You know, my, my skin rests up on my bones. It's what holds me together. Come on, you with me? It's what holds me together. Without my bones, I would have no structure. I'd be just a pile, a blubbering mess on the floor. Can you imagine? Can you imagine not having one bone? You wouldn't be able to walk. You wouldn't be able to talk. You wouldn't be able to, you couldn't, you couldn't move about. You, you would be just stuck right there. I want to show you something. Not only did he see and form your bones physically, he did it mentally, spiritually, and in your soul. Watch. Now look at this. When I was put together there, you saw me take shape before I was put together there. Verse 16. You saw my body as it was formed. Now, watch. All Days planned for me were written in your book before I even existed. Don't miss this. When bad things happen, it's not that he planned them. He has a plan for them. That'll set somebody free if you listen to me right now. It doesn't mean he planned it. He has a plan for them. The book of Romans says all things work together. For those who love the Lord and called according to his, what is the purpose? When junk happens, 
you find the purpose for the junk. And understand that he didn't plan them, he allowed them. And number two, he didn't plan them, but he has a plan for them. Now go back. How in the world, if I grew up, I don't know what it was like. I don't, I've got friends that are close to me that literally saw their mother being murdered. I have friends that are close to me that have seen their brothers and sisters locked in dog cages and being literally drilled with Bible to beat them down. I've seen, I've pulled needles out of people's arms. I, I could tell you things that would make your... When I was a pastor in Adams County, we had an eight-year-old girl and her entire family murdered. Tell me a loving God planned that. But at the same time, the scripture says there was a plan. The question is, what is your perspective of plan? So, all right. So how in the world, some of you going through what you're going through, how can you praise God for the way that you're made? How can you praise God for your disability? I look, I look at Sally. I love that woman. She's not, she, she's overcoming MS. You're not suffering from MS. You're overcoming MS. I could tell you stories of people going through what they're going through. How do I praise God for a body that's riddled with cancer? How do I praise God? We've got people. Here, here's something. I'll be honest with you. We don't talk about it in the church enough because we have, we, 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 we have demonized it to the point you're struggling with mental health and you can't even leave your home. How do you praise God when you have anxiety? I, I, I've been t- tend to hate myself. How many have loathed their self like me? You're too short. No, that's, that's me. <laughs> How do I praise God for this balding head right here? Because I got like the Ohio State horseshoe thing going. <laughs> If he knew what you were doing and what you would go through before you went through it. He has a plan for the plan. Now go back to verse 14. 14. Nope. One third. There we go. It's not helping my ADD. All right. How do I know? How do I praise him? Because I'm going through what I'm going through. I hate who I am. I hate who I'm made. I hate what I've done. I hate what I'm struggling with. How do I make it start working for the better? I begin to praise him. Because you made me an amazing, wonderful way. But I'm still got a poor image of myself. Uh, But I want to watch. Now look at this. Verse 15. You saw me. My bones being formed as I took shape in my mother's womb when I was put together there. So if my bone structure holds everything that I am together, my bone structure gives me ability to walk, does it not? If I didn't have bone structure and if I wasn't put together, I'd be a blubbering mess on the floor and I could not move out of my circumstance. But because I have bones, I have the ability to whatever I'm going through to walk out of it. And the only way that you're going to walk out of it is understand that God knew you would go through what you went through. He knew every sickness. He knew every sorrow. He knew every tear. He knew everything that ever would happen to you. He knew it, but he put in you what you needed before you were even born on the very first day. What you need, you already have. You just need to praise God for it instead of cursing it. That means your mentality You need to dig down deep. Instead of cursing everything that you are and who you are and where you are, begin to praise the Lord because there's something that God has put you in, that put inside of you. you got to begin to praise God for it. Even when I'm sitting here looking at the hardest financial day of my life, in which I do every single day it looks like in business, i got to understand that I cannot look at a negative checkbook. I can't look at down broken down trucks. I can't look at all these other things, but I begin to rejoice and praise the Lord to 
that there's something inside of me. The answer's here. And he's giving me the structure and the bone structure not to be a blubbering mess in the corner somewhere, being a victim to everything around me. But he's given me the ability, put me together, and what I need, I already have. I've just got to praise the Lord for what I have and speak life into it. Oh, come on. Can you give God a... So the question is, well, statement is, you're going to go through what you're going to go through. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust alike. The question is, what you going to do about it? Are you going to stay there in your circumstance? Are you going to stay there in your mess? Are you going to go ahead and believe maybe, just maybe, the sovereign God who has a sovereign plan, he didn't cause it, but he wants to use it. And the only way you can use it is that if you get a testimony with it. And the only way you can get a testimony of it is to walk out it and refuse to be a victim one more day. Stop cursing who you are and embrace who you are. And just maybe God can reveal into you what he already put in you. Amen. I tell the story all the time. I was probably one of the most disgraced preachers ever in this region. I don't know. I'm starting to look around. Maybe I'm not. I'm not too bad after looking at some of these other guys. I was the most. Listen, in my home county, there's never been a more disgraced, scandalous pastor ever. I didn't steal any money. Let's get that straight. I remember walking through Walmart and people would come behind me and taunt me. I remember, oh, I love the sound of kids over there. Procopio is doing children's today. This ought to be interesting. <laughs> Let's close by this, with this. Maybe, maybe you can see what all the screaming is there, Tim Fessler. I, maybe, just, maybe just check on. Maybe they're having Pentecostal Sunday. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping. Can we only pray for a baptism of the Holy Spirit of every child in our church? Wouldn't that be wonderful? No, no. The most disgraced pastor. I couldn't even show my face in public because of my decision. You know, God had a plan for that. God had a plan for that. I didn't know if I could take one more step. I didn't know if I could preach one more time. But when I dug deep and I realized what God put in me years ago, I just began to praise him because he made me wonderfully. I screwed up. I was a mess. I'm still a mess. I'm still a screw up. Anybody like me right now? The question is, was, what am I going to do about it? I've sat there in a blubbering mess for years isolated, but all of a sudden, I got a backbone about me, and I walked out of it. Stop being a blubbering mess. Embrace who you are and realize God didn't plan it, but he has a plan for it, and it will always lead to your purpose and have a life of significance. I hope you got something about it.